So last year, Congress passed the PACT Act, which automatically grants a service connection for numerous illnesses from veterans made sick by burn pit smoke in Iraq and Afghanistan to other exposures dating back to the Cold War in Vietnam. However, a recent AARP report found that nearly two-thirds of veterans don't know they're eligible for this care, and the deadline to register and intent to file is fast approaching. Dan Nevis, uh, the ambassador for Wounded Warrior Project, is here with me now with details. Dan, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good, good. So so tell me all about uh, exactly like this deadline and, and, and what it covers and, and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's really important to know, first and foremost, the deadline to get retroactive benefits to the day it was passed a year ago mm-hmm. is, is Wednesday, is in, in a couple of days, August 9th. And so it's super simple. The VA has made it super simple to just go on and do an intent to file saying like, hey, I served in these areas where toxic exposure was pretty imminent. There's a simple screening for that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I want to say that I'm going to go get checked out. I might have any of these number of illnesses, predominantly cancers. Mm-hmm. And they have a year from that date to file and still get retroactive benefits. Now, at any time in their life, if something manifests as a symptom of some sort of cancer or something, they can still file. They just won't get retroactive benefits to the day the, the law was gotcha. passed. Gotcha. So that means, like, if, if you don't file mm-hmm. and um, let's say, like, you, you've you been hospitalized or whatever mm-hmm. and you miss this deadline, that hospitalization isn't going to be covered. But if you sign up for the deadline, you're good. Right, exactly. So that, that way you're saying, like, hey, I've been in these areas. You get a screening say like hey i'm eligible <clears throat> and then so that way you're you're covered you know, you, you, the va and the government has basically admitted if you've served in all these areas there's a whole host of cancers the guy sur- survives still today uh, stage three colon cancer as a result of toxic exposure oh, wow. from my my time in iraq yeah and you know is there's like a whole subset of people who are like oh you know it's like not a big deal you yeah. know like okay i feel fine like why should i go file and that's sort of who I was until I got a cancer diagnosis. Right. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, okay, so I lost both legs below the knee in combat. I'm like, okay, just one more thing. And that's, that's sort of the reality is cancer doesn't discriminate. No. So I don't care how good you feel. I mean, I was a, I'm still am a yoga instructor. My diet was impeccable. I felt great. I was at the top of my game. And then out of nowhere, bam, cancer diagnosis. Yeah. And it's all related. So is, is this kind of like... Uh blanket coverage in the sense of i i I guess i'm asking because when Mm -hmm. i think about like uh if a a a company um Mm -hmm. illegally dumps some toxins right um the first thing they say when when cancers pop up is that like oh well you can't directly connect that because we don't have the scientific proof that that actually happened but what you're saying with the army what the military is doing Mm -hmm. is basically like saying like no we're we're just going to go ahead and cover it Right. Yeah, it's a whole list of present. They're like, if you have these giant list of types of cancers, like all reproductive cancers, mm-hmm. uh, lung cancers, liver, uh, intestinal cancers, digestive, like so many cancers are covered. It's it's easy to find out. Just pop on the pack down. Yeah. Just Google it, and you'll see the whole list, and it's pretty extensive. That they're saying, we automatically assume that these conditions that you're having now, these cancers are coming from your service in these certain areas. Yeah. I mean, in my family, uh, my uncle <clears throat> was exposed to Agent Orange mm-hmm. and uh, with my brother came back from uh, the Gulf War, the first Gulf War, uh, with the Gulf War syndrome. Uh, I mean, he seems to be doing okay now. Um, mm-hmm. My brother's crazy, so who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. All right. <laughs> It's the thing, right, brothers? <laughs> exactly. uh, but, but, uh, but, yeah, definitely. Like, this is the type of thing that he should be signing up for. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Well, and and so this is sort of why I, I get so preachy about it to people mm-hmm. is, it doesn't hurt you at all to go get your screening and go get checked out. They just go go get your chest X ray, go get a, a colonoscopy. Matter of fact, in colon cancer, it's relevant to me because that's what I had. My uh, oncologist practice is like a majority of them are under 35 years old. Right. And so this, there's happening younger and younger and then just in general, and then you link that to toxic exposure and you have a whole generation of veterans who are, I don't want to say ticking time bombs to make it 
sounds so dramatic, but I want people to feel like there's a little sense of urgency here because it's, if it's not for you and God forbid, like, I mean, I hope everyone's as healthy as possible, Mm -hmm. obviously, but with the rate of these cancers popping up in the world, I'm like, why don't you just take some time right now while this, there's like a, a reason yeah. to, to go get checked out and get it done because it's not just you either. So now if I ultimately succumb to this, this illness, because I'm enrolled in the PACT Act, there's a thing called the dependency and indemnity compensation that the VA has that will take care of my family once I'm gone. Okay. And if you don't enroll, they, that's, you're never going to get it. You're that. never going to get it. Yeah. How is uh, your cancer diagnosis going? It's going well. Yeah. I have my actually next scans next week. Actually, this Saturday, I go get those scans and blood work, and then Monday, I meet with my oncologist. So it's, it's going well. I feel good for the first time. My last, well, my, my last open wound just closed a week ago Yeah. Uh, from complications from surgery, but sure. I feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know um, I lost a family member to cancer, and I, I, I know that the uh, preparing to go in for those scans can be a very scary thing. You know, mm-hmm. like you're taking a deep breath and, like, just feeling like, uh, here we go. Exactly. Yeah. And it's the same thing. Well, it's my wife. I have to talk off the ledge all the time. Yeah. She's, she's the worrier. And I, I'm like, isn't it supposed to be the other way around where I'm supposed <laughs> to be She loves you, man. I mean, that's the beautiful thing. She loves you. It's true. It's true. <laughs> right on. So uh, tell me a little bit about your work with uh, Wounded Warrior. Oh, man. I'm, I'm, I love that organization so much. They, they have been there. They met me at my hospital bedside. Like, I got blown up November 10th, 2004. So it was like late uh-huh. November by the time. You know, I got to Walter Reed, and they met me at my hospital bedside with a backpack and a promise that whatever I needed or whatever my family needed, they'd be there for me. And uh, they've been there every step of my healing. I was a, a pharmaceutical sales rep. I worked for Pfizer before mm-hmm. I got you know, reactivated to go back to combat. And I left my job in pharmaceutical sales to, to go work in nonprofit, first for the PGA Tour, raising money for Wounded Warrior Project, and then for Wounded Warrior Project. And then I left in 2015 to do my own entrepreneurial things, but I, I am still an ambassador and a spokesperson for the organization today because we're just amazing people doing amazing things for an entire generation of warriors and their families. So if I ever get the opportunity to speak on their behalf, or I'm, I'm here to tell everybody, look, if you're a 9-11 generation of veteran, like get involved. Yeah. Right? Get involved. Get maybe get some help that you need that you might not be admitting you're needing, especially for the invisible wounds of war, or at least kind of stand up and be part of something, right? Like to, to get involved. Cause I think that one of the best things wounded warrior project is it is a, it's a community where other wounded warriors get to like meet and hang out and do things together because the, the reality is in modern warfare, you go home after you're deployed and you're, you know, back in the civilian world, you don't really know a lot of people that have your same experiences. Yeah. And it takes an organization like that to create the experiences where those people can get together and just talk. Yeah. And there's a lot of healing that happens. In that. Community is how we heal. Like we can't do it individually. We all have to do it together. Amen. Yeah. Van Nevins, thank you so much for joining us. We will be right back.